Han var ældre, end han så ud. Ja, yngre, end han så ud indeni. Og egentlig var navnet Seligman von Marseburg. Han kaldte sig blot Victor Marse. Og er forfængelig. Og han var en jødetam, og langnæsede som de. Og i sin tid var Marseburgerne blevet jagtet igennem gaderne med stenkast. Men Victor kendte ikke til programmerne. Vidste intet og ville ingenting vide om sin arv. En gang ventede han, at det skulle blive bedre med årene, og troede nok, det ville blive det. Ja, han ventede ikke bare, men søgte også. Og han lærte snart, at han måtte selv om det, og at ingen ville hjælpe en anden. Victor Marse var kunstner og vidste det, han var altid bange for ikke at kunne. Hello and welcome to my series Ranking Lars von Trier. This is episode 2. Today we'll be looking at a couple of early short features, clocking in at 37 and 57 minutes respectively. These early student slash art house films from LVT are about what you'd expect. 1977's The Orchid Gardener by the then 21 year old is more experimental with its wide array of symbolic imagery. On the one hand, broadly speaking, it's difficult for an experimental film not to feel like parody even when it's well executed. On the other hand, you have a movie where von Trier tries on different personas. A Nazi, an androgynous Nazi, full drag, guy hanging from a noose, mortician, etc. The plot synopsis for this thing at Wikipedia is over 1,300 words long, which is about 1,200 too many. But I'm kind of a sucker for this slop. The idea that someone could purge that much meaning and or action from this self-indulgent nightmare makes me feel good. That's how I would explain why I like this. Any true deep thinking on the subject would ruin it for me. Copenhagen, 1945. Esther, Geliebte, dieser schreckliche Krieg, der uns zusammengeführt hat, ist nun wieder zwischen uns getreten. Images of liberation, or sometimes translated from the Danish as images of relief, is von Trier's 1982 graduation film from the National Film School of Denmark. Another in what would be a career-long flirtation with World War II and assorted ephemera. It's set in Copenhagen and follows a German officer who visits his Danish mistress in the days after the occupation of Denmark has ended. It's just as weird and obtuse as its shorter predecessor, but it's much more focused. Its main issue is no real fault of its own. There doesn't seem to be a version of this in anything resembling acceptable video quality. Outside of being an Easter egg on the four-disc European DVD release of his Europa trilogy, it has never been given a proper restoration, and the only versions floating around on YouTube and elsewhere are rough. LVT plays with color filters here, as he would through much of his early and middle periods. The action shifts through red, yellow, and green hues, and frankly, the lighter the effect, the easier it was to literally see what was happening. The file I screened was so bad it was like looking at a series of optical illusions trying to decipher what was in the scene, but don't take my word for it. It's all very dark, fantastical material, and it ends with grown men trying to talk to birds and women stabbing trees. I don't know what it means, and I don't really care. Tune in next week when we will examine Von Trier's only collaborative effort, the hybrid documentary he made with director Jorgen Leth in 2003, The Five Obstructionists. Thanks for watching. And or listening.